And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. It's me, your old pal, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Tony Hawk. It's back, one of my favorite game series of all time, if you watch the Friday show. And it's finally good again, straight up. We've had a lot of misses with Tony Hawk over the years, most recently with, you know, the weaker attempt at remastering the first game, and then Tony Hawk 5, which we don't really talk about. This bad boy, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 here in 2020, this is a revitalization of the original first two games from the ground up. You know, the first two Tony Hawk games were the ones that exploded, and while personally I think the series moved on to true gameplay greatness with like Tony Hawk 4 and Underground. This is still very much a good play at nostalgia. Everyone played these games. They were massive hits. And so with that, this new version feels absolutely fresh and modern and kind of more in tune with modern skate culture while also at the same time pulling at those nostalgic heartstrings for old fans. Thankfully, it goes far enough in the gameplay department to appease harder core fans who never really left like me, who, you know, we're extremely picky. So the gameplay is absolutely up to par with what you'd expect from a cleaned up classic version of the old games. Straight up, it plays much better than Tony Hawk 5 and previous remaster attempts by a long shot. They've based it off of the original design code base, which they had access to, and it's modernized slightly, so it's a little faster, a little weightier, and more aggressive, but still true to feel. This is very much an arcade style game. I understand and appreciate skate, and I know people love skate, but this is fun in, in a different way. You know, your muscle memory should return here thanks to all that old control stuff. You know, manuals, manual tricks, spine transfers, and the revert are all there so you can really combo around a level to your heart's content. And for old fans that were just a bit more casual, it's really great that it's accessible with a bunch of options and also just easy to jump right back in like riding a bike. You can even turn cheats on from the menu where you have infinite balance. You know, there's a nice little tutorial too if you've never played. And on the more difficult side, I am really glad they included the later edition gameplay mechanic from 2, 3, and 4 to really streamline it so you can really combo around like crazy. That's where the fun is here. You know, it, it really works with the game being faster and a bit more aggressive. I fall a lot just because I'm always trying to go bigger and harder, and that's where the addiction truly freaking is. The way it works is you're able to progress through all the levels of Tony Hawk 1 and all the levels of Tony Hawk 2 in separate playlists. You know, working your way through those classic two-minute rounds, finding the secret tape, collecting the letters skate, going for crazy high scores and combos. It's, it's just as satisfying as you remember. Some of it is a cakewalk and some of it requires some tricky precision. And all of it works because the levels are very lovingly recreated. And honestly, the maps from one and two are some of the best in the series. And they're only better now because like I mentioned earlier, you have way more combo opportunities at your fingertips. The levels all still have most of their hidden nooks and surprises and remembering them and discovering things is kind of like a new layer of nostalgia fun. And they all really look good too. You know, some of the levels are brought to life here and look straight up stunning, like the downtown and New York levels and France, Philly, a few others. The character models look damn great, especially the way they move and they react a bit more to like landing a trick and there's a little bit of a bounce in their body. Uh, the way the camera shakes ever so slightly when you hit the ground from a vert ramp with a revert. Little graphical touches here and there just make it solid, but the lighting is the biggest thing. When the light hits perfectly in something like the warehouse level, that's where you really notice that the graphics are pretty damn good. And the game is usually super smooth, but I did have a surprising amount of frame dips on my PS4 Pro at times. That was the version I decided to play. I wanted to just play it on console like the old days. And here and there, those frame rate drops were a little disappointing. You know, it's only on a few maps here and there, but it's still worth mentioning. What was I saying though? Uh, yeah, the maps themselves are great and kind of the star of the show here. You know, the only one I didn't like here, what they did is the aircraft hangar from Tony Hawk 2. They decided to make it like a clean, modern style hangar, and it was jarring. It just looks weird, like really weird. It's a very, very minor aesthetic complaint, and most people aren't gonna notice, I'm just saying. Uh, now, there is a new level of rewards, progression, and stat tracking stuff. The game is basically tracking everything you do, from combos, to high scores, to spins, to kickflips, everything. And there's all these different challenge completions that you can check off a list and cash in to get experience that levels you up 
and you get in-game cash to then buy stuff like new skateboards or clothing in the game's shop. It's a really satisfying progression loop because it adds an extra new layer onto all this old stuff, and it's a just good challenge because it pushes you to do and try new things and play all the characters. There's a good amount of progression to work through here, and I really like it. It might even incentivize some players who mostly play street to try doing more vert tricks, stuff like that. And create a skater returns. You can make your own skater, and then, like I mentioned, you can buy clothing and accessories and stuff for them, but I gotta say, the create a skater mode itself is severely lacking. For me, personally, this was a big disappointment here. You, you can only really have, like, one body type and a handful of pre-made faces. Like, there aren't sliders so you can't be fat, you can't be short or tall, and you can't give yourself a big nose or a small nose or anything like that. You can't make super crazy characters like I used to love doing, and that's a bit of a disappointment here, man. Personally, since I look so generic, I had no problem making myself in the game actually pretty accurately, but uh, I hope you don't wear glasses or anything, because if you try to make yourself in game, even with basic things like that, you're out of luck. I really wish there was more here. Thankfully, they do provide any amount of skateboard decks and wheels and stuff like that. As someone who does at least skateboard occasionally in real life, it was nice to see this type of stuff. And of course, Creative Park returns as well, and it seems fine. You know, I'm not very creative, but I did access some levels made online, and it's fun to mess around. Although I will say the level creator is a, is a bit jacked up. You know, you can kind of just grind on the invisible connecting points between items placed in the environment sometimes. So you can just kind of grind on invisible ledges and it, it seems really glitchy at points, but the creativity on display here is a good use of this. This is, a, this is a modern version of that old create a park type of thing where you just build a park and show your friends in real life. Now in 2020 where we don't have any friends, we can share them online. <laughs> And the music is great. You know, they've got most of the big classic songs from the first two games, and then they've thrown in some new music as well to fill it out. I think the new music really fits incredibly well. They made some good choices here, and it works for kind of blending the new and old. You know, you have all this old skater stuff, the old generation skaters, then you have new younger skaters, you have more modern clothing, and music that reflects today, and it all kind of seamlessly blends together. It doesn't feel forced. This is such a corny, overused freaking phrase. I'm sorry, guys. But like, there is there is really something for everyone here. Speaking of things being here, multiplayer is here, and you can play the old-fashioned way, most importantly, split screen. You know, it was the way to play, and it still is. And then there's also online multiplayer. And after just testing it out a little bit, it's simple, but effective. You know, they didn't go like Tony Hawk 5 and add some weird modes and complicated and overdo it. Here, it's just a simple rotating group of simple competitive modes, and it's short and sweet, and I actually found it a bit addictive, you know? Uh, probably because it's like the first online multiplayer game I'm actually competent at, but still, this is a good start. I hope eventually maybe they can add some more progression to it other than just getting more cash to buy a new hoodie in the game. I know I would just generally like to see a bit more here, more options, more lobby options, matchmaking options, stuff like that. Hopefully that stuff gets added in the future because that's kind of important if this online mode is gonna thrive, but we'll see where this goes, really. I do wish there were more unlockable hidden characters. You know, the, the old games had these classic, crazy over-the-top characters. I know licensing makes it a little more difficult in 2020 to get people like, you know, maybe Darth Maul or Django Fett or the guys from Kiss, you know? Uh, here we just get like a special edition pre-order type thing with the Ripper skeleton. Uh, then there's the Jack Black version of the classic Officer Dick, which is pretty awesome. You get that by finishing a bunch of challenges. And then there are hidden alien plushies all around the environments and you get them and you get the Area 51 alien. And there might be more, but we haven't discovered them yet. So just keep that in mind. Now the big question, of course, will they add microtransactions post-launch? Activision has done that before, but this all seems fine here. I'm glad there's balanced unlockables. It all seems to just be fine. You know, all this stuff, the secret characters and the Easter eggs in the environment is well and good, but I, I wish there was a little bit more personality in the game, more secret characters, more grit and grime that the old game had. It's, it's more of a feel than anything, just a personal opinion, a personal complaint here, of course. It's just a little clean and safe. Those things aside, still, if you can't tell, man, I really highly recommend this new Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. It's a great return to form. It's not full price, it's nostalgic for people, and also it's good enough to ride with the big boy competitive players. The culture is there, the iconic songs are there, the fun is there, most importantly. I really hope this means Tony Hawk as a video game thing is back 
big time and I, I can't wait to see what happens next. I hope something happens next. But of course, this is a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and some definite personal opinion, but I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Have you been playing this weekend? Uh, what version are you playing on? If you're playing on PC, I'd love to hear from you just because we didn't get to test that out. Who is your favorite skater? Is it one of the classic skaters that have been aged up or is it a new modern skater? We can talk about anything Tony Hawk down in the comments. Things get a little crazy down there though. We try to talk back, but if you wanna yell at me directly or ask me some questions, Find me on Twitter, Instagram, and my other YouTube channel. It's all just at Jake Baldino. But thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, maybe we helped inform your purchase, stuff like that. If we did, clicking the like button does help us out. We do appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell, because we've been out videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.